And we're back, guys. Tennis in a minute. I'm your host, Good Energy. I give you the rundown on tennis coverage every day. We're in the studio. Now, I promised you guys this video two and a half weeks ago. Just did a little bit of tweaking to it. It's a little bit late, but better late than never. We want to take a look at Igas Fiontek, the world drink number one. And we just want to just take a look at how she's been dominating the tour rank number one. Now, look, she's five foot nine, 22 years old from Warsaw ladies and gentlemen now her coach Tomas he's literally one of the most innovative coaches out there right he's doing all of these different things to kind of keep Iga not only in shape but I think motivated right that's what a good coach does a good coach inspires their players their their athletes to be better to do better but think outside the box be innovative but the hardest part about being a good coach or leader is finding the right people, finding people that want to. That's the challenge. And Iga Fiontech wants to. She wants to be the best. She wants to be number one, which is why she works so hard. And if you're not familiar, ladies and gentlemen, I talked about this a couple weeks ago. Iga Fiontech, she's in a new category. History again, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. She is literally the last player since Serena Williams to win WTA Player of the Year. That's some good company to be in. That's right, she's climbing the ladder towards greatness. But wait, there's more. We're gonna take a look at Iga's Fiontech's reign at number one, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we all know the reign at number one started right around Doha, right? When Ashley Barty announced she was going to retire and by default, Iga's Fiontech became the world's number one. But listen, she won that tournament in Doha where she took out Annette Conteve, gave her a bagel, right? And that was literally the start of the bagel run, right? With the exception of Harriet Dart at the Australian Open where she gave Harriet Dart a bagel in the first round. But she did make it to the semifinals in the Australian Open where she lost to Danielle Collins, who would eventually lose to Ashley Barty in the championship. But Indian Wells, now this is where I joke about Iga Fiontech making the sunshine double look like a routine day at the beach. Remember I made that punch line up? That's hilarious. Come on, go watch the videos. Go like them. She won the Indian Wells by taking out Sakuri 6461. And then she won Miami by taking out Naomi Osaka, 646 Love, another bagel. Now she had two bagels in Miami, Victoria Golovic in the first round. And the first set with Osaka in the championship match was competitive 6-4, but the second set, huge drop off from Osaka a bagel now we're gonna see if osaka comes back with that mental eye of the tiger that mental toughness that she had when she won all those slams because her last year and a half on tour was just full of problems and she wasn't focused so if she comes back i think immediately osaka will be back inside the top 10 by the end of the year because she's that good she's, she's going to make it to quarterfinal and semifinal appearances and all the top events that's all you need to do to hit the top 10 but this video is about Igas Fiontech. Listen, guys, 80 weeks at number one, cumulative, right? And we all know 75 consecutive. But this video, we are taking a look at some of the championships she won en route to that. Now, we all know if you follow the channel, I gave you literally all of the futures to take Igas Fiontech. And this was coming out of Ashley Barty's shadow, where a lot of people weren't picking Iga to win these tournaments. I did this early on, and again, Iga didn't have a lot of fans coming to the channel or just in general at the matches following her. But once, I mean, and she was still a Rolling Girls champion, right? So I really noticed the fans really started to come and pay attention right around the win streak when we hit the French Open and she took out Coco and then she headed into Wimbledon and she uh broke venus williams record by beating yana fett giving her a bagel that's when i noticed it's like everyone just clicked online and they're like yeah we're on board now but she won miami right then she won stugger arena savalenka where arena look rude in the trophy ceremony very rude then she won rome then she won the french open and then rome she beat on jabor 6262 handed out another bagel to gabriella elena russa in the first round in the quarterfinals, a bagel to Bianca Andreescu, 
The French Open, a bagel to Alessia Sorenko, Allison Riss in the second round, and a bagel to Kenwin Jung in the round of 16. And of course, she beat Coco in the championship 6-1, 6-3. Wimbledon, uh, grass, she's working on grass, so we're not going to take too we're not going to pay too much attention to Wimbledon. We know that. And then the U.S. Open. This was the, and I say it all the time, if you want to be a big star in tennis, you have to win the U.S. Open. This is when Iga Stardom just hit another level. A bagel, Jasmine Polini in the first round. A bagel, Julian Niemeyer in the round of 16. And we all know she took out Pegula, Sabalenka, and Anja Bohr to win that. Then she went to Ostrava. She didn't win that. She lost to Barbara Kachikova in the championship, but good effort. She won San Diego. She took out Donna Vekic. She gave Coco a bagel in the quarterfinal. She gave Donna Vekic a bagel in the, in the, in the third set. A lot of controversy surrounding that. We're not going to talk about it. That was the year of 22. Iga Sviantec just dominating the tour, right? We all know she passed Venus Williams' consecutive win streak. And she headed into 23 a little bit injured right we all know that but let's take a look at again some of the tournaments she won as number one she won doha right that was the first title of of this year a bagel to kuna matova in the semifinal. a bagel to daniel collins a bagel to begula in the championship match she lost dubai i told you guys kuchika will win dubai as a five to one underdog but she came back struggled at the end in wells she won stugger though right took a little bit of a break off over a month she came back healthy and she literally on Shabor had to retire with with the knee injury the ankle and she beat Sabalenka that led to the drama with Sabalenka trying to break the Porsche window which she promised to her father that was disgusting okay she went to Madrid Sabalenka got revenge at Madrid she won that but not before handing out a bagel to Petra Marchik in the quarterfinals right Iga's bakery continued to be open the French open she was back at it we're not we're not going to talk about Rome where Elena were back and I took her out but she didn't hand out a bagel to Lesia Sorenko and Anastasia Pagliuchinkova the French open Mukova big time she started things off handing out a bagel to Christina Buxa Claire Lou in the second round in the third round Wong had the double bagel and Iga's bakery was taking orders and pre-orders she won the French open taking out Mukova third set popcorn worthy we're not going to talk about bad humburg but wimbledon ladies and gentlemen yes yes wimbledon ladies and gentlemen making it her best appearance ever to the quarterfinal that's right now she went three sets with Svitolina. i heard people say look iga through the match she lets Svitolina win come on iga's not that type of competitor iga wants to win every match iga said it herself she doesn't enter a match she doesn't think she could win and the reason we're not going to talk about bad humburg is because she had the championship but she flew out to Wimbledon and Bronzetti ended up winning that semifinal match due to a forfeit. Warsaw, she went back home and handed out more bagels. She took out Laura Sigmund in the championship, gave her a bagel in the first set. Montreal struggled there. Cincinnati, Coco Golf took her out. But listen, guys, U.S. Open, she struggled, but she got back on track at Beijing, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. And this is where she headed into Cancun to regain her number one ranking. These are some of the key matches she played along this 80 weeks of reigning at number one and of course guys yes she lost some here and there but the reality here is she's in great company and let's take a look at some of the greats she has now joined with having 75 weeks at the number one spot consecutively and 80 weeks overall cumulative now in terms of female tennis this is the record here for players in terms of holding the number one ranking for consecutive weeks. Igas Fiontek is number 12 on that list. Chris Everett, number 11 with 76. So one more week, literally, well, technically two more weeks, she could have passed Chris Everett. Martina Hingis, 80 weeks. Steffi Graf, 87 weeks. Navatilova, 90 weeks. Monica Sellis, 91 weeks. Steffi Graf again, 94 weeks. Chris Everett, 113 weeks. Ashley Barty, 114 weeks. And we all know Iga just spent, she spent Ashley Barty's last two years just trying to chase her and, and outdo her. And uh, Navratilova again, 156 weeks. And Serena Williams, Steffi Graf again, tied for 186 weeks. Now, Serena Williams, if you're not familiar, at one time, they called, <laughs> she had something called the Serena Slam because Serena held all the slams at once that is insane i don't think that will ever be done again that was amazing so yes igus viantek hits 80 weeks as number one 
cumulative that is. She's the 10th player to do that. So it's only right that we take a look at the cumulative list, right? These are players that have spent the most weeks at number one. Uh, and of course, this is over the span of numerous seasons. Steffi Graf at number one with 377 weeks. Martina Navratilova, 332. Serena Williams, 319. Chris Everett, 260. Hengis, 209. Sellis, 178. Barty, 121. Ashley Barty, I'm telling you guys. Tennis was going towards a great place when Barty was number one. I mean, we had, we had Osaka playing her best tennis. And I mean, look, it was possibly towards the start of Osaka's decline, but we still had Serena kind of hanging on with one foot in, one foot out. And the star power, you had its players like Igas Fiontech coming up, Coco Golf. That was just a good period for women's tennis. Justine Hennen, 117 weeks. Lindsay Davenport. And there you have Igas Fiontech with 81. And Caroline Wozniacki, 71. She's there. Simona Halep's there. Azarenka's there with 51 and then it starts to decline and if you take a look i mean even osaka's there ranked 17th with 25 weeks and you can see down there kim clusters and uh, venus williams 11 weeks and <laughs> of course venus had to play in the shadows of little sister but Igas fiante guys she's in some great company and she's going to add to that i mean if she has another amazing year she could possibly crack i mean let's just be honest she can crack the the eighth spot i mean I, I think it's realistic she can take out justine hennon what do you guys think maybe even number seven take out ashley barty it's possible she's going to need to win for sure the french open she's got to go deep at the australian open for that to even happen but i think it's possible and let's take a look at the longest WTA unbeaten streaks. Now, this is not considered the modern era. We all know the modern era. Serena was on that list a couple times, Venus as well. And we all know Igas Fiontech's 37 match unbeaten streak is pretty darn good. But if we take a look at some of the older veterans that helped shape the way for this younger generation, pretty good list, of, pretty good company to be in, right? Iga's right in that mix. As you can see there, Navratilova, she's on the list four times, uh, 41 consecutive wins in 82. She had 54 wins from 83 to 84, 58 wins from 86 to 87, and 74 wins in the year 1984. Steffi Graf, 66 consecutive wins in 89-90, unbelievable. Margaret Court, 57 wins in 72. Chris Everett, 55 and 74. Listen, I don't think Chris Everett, and, and again, Chris Everett, 41 wins in 75, 76. I don't think Chris gets the respect she deserves. I just, and then she, she even said that on air one time. Uh, I have to go find that video. I think I covered when she said that. I don't think Chris Everett gets the respect she deserves. I, I really don't. But really quick, if we take a look at weeks at number one leaders timeline, look at Chris Everett, a nine year duration with a record of 238. Navratilova, a record of 240. Chris Everett again, nine month duration, 260. Navratilova, 10 years, 332. Steffi Graf, 27 years, 377. So listen guys, Iga's in great company. She's doing amazing things. And what, what about the bagels? Iga, if I'm not mistaken, Iga's like number third all time in bagels, right? Something like that, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, in the old days, bagels weren't really a thing, you know, opponents then look, they, they'd let you win a service game just, just to make it entertaining for the fan. They were trying to grow the sport. So being too dominant in those days was kind of frowned upon. But in this era with technology and media, it's about being the best. And Igas Fiontech, she is showing you that her skills and talent level it's just one step ahead of the tour, especially last year. I mean, it was night and day, right? That the tour needed catching up. And I was on record saying this. I just felt the tour just, they got really caught by surprise because Iga coming off of the 21 WTA championships, she had one of the worst serves there. And she she wasn't considered a threat to win that tournament at all. She just, she just wasn't. So for her to come back literally two months later, Two to three months later and just dominate the tour like that it, it was very surprising and and i was giving out all those futures no one expected it, and they were all winning and Igas fiante guys she's in good company with the queen serena what can she do for the 24 season how many slams do you predict Iga will win comment below how many bagels will she give out 
over or under 25 bagels? How many slams over or under one? Comment below. Tennis in a minute. I'm your host, Good Energy. Polis fans, show some love for Igas Viantek. Tennis fans worldwide, show some love. We'll be right back. <laughs> 